So Huawei has just launched its beefy new Mate 40 series of smartphones boasting the killer Kirin 9000 chipset and the usual impressive camera tech. And they were kind enough to bung me a Mate 40 Pro which serves up some very serious specs indeed. So I'm going to yank the Mate 40 Pro out of its box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software so you know exactly what to expect. And for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now the only problem with getting these phones before the actual launch is I don't actually know the official UK price or release date just yet. They always like to save that information for the actual launch itself but I'd expect the Mate 40 Pro to cost around 900 quid and hopefully we won't be waiting several months for it to hit the UK like we were with the Mate 30 Pro. So you've got your Pokey SIM tray device, you've also got a condom case bundle in the box as well which you don't always get with the more premium devices as well so that's good. A big old gaping ring, very cool. You've also got the fresh new Huawei 66 watt supercharge adapter, bit of Type-C USB and a pair of hard shell earphones as well. Does this mean that Huawei has brought back their headphone jack for the Mate 40 series? No, of course they haven't. They are USB headphones. So that's the box. Now it's time for the beast. And there she blows. And the Mate 40 Pro instantly, immediately just looks like a Huawei smartphone. Very premium, very sleek. As you can see, you've once again got that waterfall uh, edge screen design. It just cascades over the sides. Pretty much the entire side, in fact. I'm really hoping that doesn't uh, result in any issues with responsiveness. So practically no bezels at all. You've got glass front and back as well. On the back it's a frosted finish. And quite a subdued selection of colours for the Mate 40 Pro as well. Often Huawei in the past has thrown up all kinds of greens and blues and purples and violets and uh, really vibrant in your face efforts. And here you do get some subtle colours being cast off that surface as it catches the lights. So as you can see uh, just a sort of subtle hint of purple and green and red. But yeah definitely a lot more sedate compared with past generations. And I believe if you want something even more mysterious you can also grab the Huawei Mate 40 Pro in black. And like the Mate 30 Pro before it, you once again get the uh, circular design for the camera chassis there, dubbed here a space ring. And I'm going to try and be good today, no more ring jokes, I promise. Kind of. And thankfully that space ring is almost flush with the surface, only juts out ever so slightly so it's not going to cause a problem if you rest the phone down on a desk or something and try and use it. And I love some of the fine little details that Huawei has thrown onto the Mate 40 Pro as well, like this incredibly skinny aluminium band just kind of opening up and widening for those uh, two buttons, the volume rocket and the power button. And as usual that power button is a colourful wee chappy. So overall the Huawei Mate 40 Pro is definitely a slick looking smartphone. Hopefully it should prove nice and rugged as well, usually the Huawei smartphone are very resistant to scratches and scuffs which is good and you've got a pre-installed screen protector on here as well which is again great to see plus full IP68 water and dust resistance so you've got extra peace of mind there shouldn't crap out on you if you accidentally knock in the sink while you're doing the washing up the symmetry is down on the bottom end let's just give it a uh, little poke and pull it on out and what you have here is a reversible tray with dual SIM support, so one or two SIM cards. Otherwise, that second SIM slot can also be used for a nano memory card. So you can bung an NM card up to 256 gigs in size into the Mate 40 Pro to expand the already pretty damn generous 256 gigs of internal storage, which is UFS 3.1 as well, just like the latest OnePlus 8T. All right, so the Huawei Mate 40 Pro is all set up and ready for action. And as you can see, I've already downloaded a couple of apps like BBC iPlayer uh, and also uh, put the apps tray back on as well because that's not on there by default. Haven't changed the theme though, that's the default one. Kind of looks like a furry ring. Does that count as a ring joke? Nah. But as usual, you've got loads of different themes that you can quickly switch between uh, courtesy of the themes app. Quite a few of them will cost you though, so I'm going to say a box to that and just uh, do my usual anime geeky stuff. Now it is Android 10 running on here, not the latest Android 11, and it is the open source version of Android as well, which means no Google services, so you won't see the Google Play Store on here, or indeed any Google apps. You've got the ever-expanding Huawei Gallery, which is uh, packed with quite a lot of apps these days. Otherwise, you've got good old Petal Search if you want to find something that isn't on there. So for instance, I've already done that for iPlayer. Going to have a search now for Google Chrome. As you can see there, it's found it on AP. PK Pure. It's just a quick and handy way of sideloading apps that you won't find on your app store. Of course, when you are downloading apps as APK files from the internet, you've got to be a bit more careful. Make sure you don't download anything dodge. Make sure you only download stuff that's been downloaded a lot and verified by other users. Thankfully, the Mate 40 Pro will run a full scan on any APKs that you download, and you can also see exactly what permissions they have ahead of time as well. So let's see if this is actually working all right. And yeah, Touchwood seems absolutely fine. So let's find some geeky wallpaper. 
All right, job well and truly done. So as I said before, it is running Android 10 open source version, but you do have, of course, Huawei's Emotion UI slathered on top. And in this case, it is the latest version, of course, a MIUI 11, uh, which I've already done a full video on, so you can go check that out for an in-depth look at some of the best features on there. But of course, you've got all the usual features on there, like the Hey Celia Assistant. You've got lots of different customization options on there. You can uh, set up a bit of magazine unlock, and the Always On Display has changed up quite a lot for Emotion UI 11 too. So you've now got a better selection of Always On Display Display styles, including some very artistic efforts, as you can see there. And with the Meter 40 Pro, you can set it so that always display is actually always on. Otherwise, you can schedule it so it's only on when you're actually awake and likely to use it. Or you can use the new smart always on display settings. And with this option set, the always on display will only actually activate when you glance at the Huawei Mate 40 Pro or give the screen a bit of a tap. So... There it goes, way. I'm not gonna even move the phone, just turning my head. Yeah, yeah, that seems to work, an absolute charm, that. The Huawei Mate 40 Pro also offers an in-display fingerprint sensor, so I just quick tap of that, and absolutely no delay whatsoever, straight in. And if you don't wanna use that fingerprint sensor, or you're wearing gloves or something, so you can't, where you do have face unlock as usual as well, so I can just tap the power button, and again, you're straight in. And that can require eye contact as well, so it is nice and secure. And you've got the usual selection of gesture support as well, so for instance, you can hover your palm over the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, and that will activate the screen as well. Anyway, as I say, if you wanna go check out some more Motion UI stuff, I've done a full video on Motion UI 11, so definitely have a gander at that. Now let's turn our attention to that 6.67 inch OLED display. Definitely very impressed with just how far that screen curves around the edge of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. That's for all the bonkers. And touch wood so far, the actual responsiveness seems absolutely fine when you're using the likes of Chrome one-handed. Even though my palm chub is quite clearly intruding quite substantially on that display. You got a 2772 by 1344 Quad HD Plus resolution. So yeah, visuals are nice and sharp as you would kind of hope and expect. Full HDR support, of course, a nice sharp contrast, and the colors look nice and natural as well. You've got full DCI-P3 support, and on the default display settings, everything does look nice and natural and realistic. At any point, you can dive into those display settings and make things a little bit more vivid, just boost those hues a little bit to make a, those colors a little bit more poppy. And of course, you can play around with the color temperature yourself as well. And yeah, like pretty much every other uh, flagship smartphone out there as well, you've got a 90 hertz refresh rate option, set to dynamic by default, so it will switch up between 60 and 90 to sort of preserve your battery life when it's not entirely needed. But you can boost it up to ultra if you want it full time. The Huawei Mate 40 Pro also boasts a stereo speaker setup. So you've got a very narrow earpiece grill uh, just built into this top edge, and then you've got the bottom mounted speaker as well. And they work in tandem to give you that stereo effects. So let's check it out. Oculus Quest 2 VR headset to lose yourself in a glorious virtual reality environment and forget that actual reality is about as much fun as a stick your genitals in a hornet's nest competition. And that's not bad at all. That top earpiece does actually uh, pull a fair amount of weight there, so it's not all resting on the bottom speaker. Uh, nice and loud and quite crisp, clear audio on that top volume as well. Sadly, however, as I mentioned before, no headphone jack here on the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, so you are basically relying on either a pair of USB earphones or good old Bluetooth, but you do have Bluetooth 5.2 support on here. Now the absolute monster providing the performance here is Huawei's fresh new Kirin 9000 chipset. That's a five nanometer platform similar to Apple's A14. And considering we've gone from hundreds to thousands, you'd expect a massive f***ing jump in performance versus the older Huawei phones. And indeed, apparently you get a 30% leap in the CPU grant and a 50% GPU performance improvement versus last year's Kirin 990. And the Mate 40 Pro has eight gigs of RAM stuffed inside, so it certainly seems absolutely fine, nice and responsive, no matter what you're trying to do. As for the battery, well, it's a 4,400 milliamp cell stuffed inside of here, so not quite as big as some rivals, but Huawei phones tend to be quite energy efficient. And touch wood, I started off with 100% when I'd set it all up and everything. I've been playing with it for a while, playing some games, streaming some video, things like that. And we're only down to 94%, as you can see there. It reckons that 27 hours are remaining. You've got the usual power saving modes and everything, if you need them anyway. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your 66 watt supercharge tech on board as well, so hopefully you should power back up in well under an hour and of course you've got wireless charging on here and the usual reverse wireless charging as well or wireless reverse charging rather and that proves very helpful 
if you've got an accessory like Huawei's own FreeBuds, which support Qi wireless chargers, you'll slap them on the back of the smartphone and just get them powered up if you find yourself running dry. And last up, let's take a look at that quad lens rear camera tech. So what you've got here is the same 50 megapixel ultra vision primary lens with built-in optical image stabilization that you got on the Huawei P40 Pro, which is absolutely fine by me because that was a fantastic camera. I expect nice natural looking colors, incredibly sharp detail. As you can see there, nice bright, Colourful results despite the fact we're in the dingy studio. Very crisp detail indeed. You do have an AI mode that you can switch on uh, which will just boost uh, the colours and uh, such forth depending on the actual subject. I tend to leave that switched off to be honest because I prefer the more natural results you get with it turned off. And you've got the usual range of filters that you can play around with as well if that's your bag. And of course as you would expect from a premium Huawei smartphone you've got very flexible camera tech as well. So for instance you can tap into the ultra wide angle lens. It's a 20 megapixel effort. It's actually the second gen Cine camera as well we terms it. You've got some very clever video features which I will cover in a bit. Then the third lens in this Mate 40 Pro setup is a 12 megapixel periscope lens once again with a five times optical zoom again just like on that P40 Pro uh, but you can dive all the way up to hybrid zoom of 10 times and indeed if you keep on zooming in you can go all the way up to 50 times zoom here on the Mate 40 Pro and certainly at that 10 times hybrid zoom level still nice crisp results. Once you start to get closer to the 50 times level of course things get a bit more grainy but still very impressive telephoto smarts. And then of course you've got the usual range of bonus modes, you've got a good bit of portrait smarts and these Huawei smartphones are absolutely killer when it comes to the portrait uh, photos. Absolutely gorgeous bokeh style effect keeping your subject nice and sharp even when it's a moving subject, a fast moving subject like a small hyperactive child. And those portrait shots will definitely be helped along by the fourth and final lens, that's time of flight depth sensor. Uh, you've got your pro controls as well so you can dive on in there, play around with like the white balance, uh, the shutter speed, all of that good stuff. You've got your JPEG, your JPEG L and your RAW support. And then as usual you've got that dedicated night mode which takes a long exposure shot and can just produce really bright nice looking images even in pretty much total darkness. So as you can see there even though the lens was battling against some pretty strong lighting and of course my hand tremor and all the usual guff uh, came out really really nicely indeed. Nice and sharp and detailed again plenty of background information there as well. And that works with a full complement of lenses as well. Then when you swap to video of course again you can use the full complement of lenses including that telephoto and the Cine uh, ultra wide angle camera as well which is supposed to be really really good for your low light video. You can shoot up to 4k resolution video using either the primary lens or that ultra wide angle lens as well no worries. And even at that ultra HD level you can bump it up to 60 frames per second too. And the Mate 40 Pro should be an improvement for your home movies even over the likes of the P40 Pro because now you've got Huawei's XD Fusion HDR video chops on there basically offering perfect balance, nice sharp details in darker elements and doesn't blow out the lighter elements when you You've got a really nice high contrast scene so particularly good for shooting city skips at night you would hope. And then last up you've got a dual camera setup for that selfie uh, snapper. It's a 13 megapixel primary lens so I uh, should pack a fine amount of detail for your selfie needs and that's backed by a time of flight lens. So great news again for those portrait shots can just help to blur out the background and of course you can play around with the effects get all kinds of randomness on the go. Pop 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 and you too can look this sexy. And there you have it that is the Huawei Mate 40 Pro in a nutshell. So definitely some very clever tech indeed on there. Love that Emotion UI 11 uh, interface some very smart features loving the uh, the likes of the uh, eyes on display feature all that good stuff. Definitely looking forward to fully testing out that camera tech seeing what that is capable of. And as usual it's a shame you don't have that full fat Android on here. I wouldn't be surprised if that does put a lot of people off especially if you are quite dependent on Google services. So 2021 will be very interesting for Huawei. See what happens with the likes of the P50 series. If it starts slapping Harmony OS on its devices instead, go on its own route well and truly. So what do you think of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro? Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.